Good afternoon, viewers of Seven News Television. We are happy you guys over there to watch this program, Experts. In our country today, people, or we all know that the problem of good urban planning is quite something we ought to handle. In cities like Douala and Yaoundé, when it rains, we have floods, vehicles can make their way through, not to talk of the pedestrians. Deaths, litters, have been found everywhere along the streets of the capital city, Yaoundé. What really is the problem is a question that we ought to answer. And only a specialist on urbanization can give us the correct answer to this question. With us this afternoon is an expert in urban development and planning. He is no other person than Prince Ayong Ta. Before I go over to him, I would like us to understand that the theme of today is the effects of urban planning in our country, Cameroon. Good afternoon, Mr. Prince Ta Ayong. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Bissau. Good afternoon to uh, the viewers of uh, our most cherished Seven News TV. It's a privilege to be here, and I want to appreciate your TV station for the topical issues that they have been handling, and especially today, where we are handling another very crucial uh, topic, especially when we take uh, cognizance of the fact that recently, and even in the years past, our cities are becoming more of, we can say, uh, malediction than a blessing as it's supposed to be. So I think recurrent topics like this have to come up, suggestions made, so that we start to see how we can reduce the effects of what we are about to talk this afternoon. Yeah, Prince Tahir, we are talking of the effects of poor urban planning in Cameroon. You are an expert. What is urbanization? Thank you very much. Uh, I will define uh, a number of concepts which we enable our televiewers to really understand what we're about to talk on. First, to begin with, uh, answer the question straight away. Urbanization uh, by concept is a concept and by definition it is the increasing growth in the number of people who live in towns or cities in a country. Okay. The increasing growth in the number of people who live in towns and cities in a country. So by it, the term urbanization, it is not pejorative. It is a positive aspect which generally is supposed to express the level of development of a country. country yes. Because if more people are living in towns and cities, it means the country is transformed more from a royal setup to an urban setup or city setup. So that is what urbanization is all about. We also have a concept like the growth of towns. Mm -hmm. The growth of towns in this concept is the increase in the number of towns in a city, in a country, sorry. The okay. increase in the number of towns or cities in a country. That one now is called urban growth or the growth of towns in any concept. Now we have our core matter, which is town planning. Town planning on its part is a science. It is a profession. It is a, a technique that is aimed at designing how the urban area has to be profitable, comfortable to those who live in it or what we call the urban dwellers. Yes. Those who live in towns are called urban dwellers. So like what those who live in villages are called villagers. villagers. So if you live in town, you're an urban dweller. So the major aim of town planning is aimed at improving the conditions in any town or city to the benefit of the urban dwellers. And specifically, this is done under three main concepts. Governance, infrastructural development, and environmental protection. You are talking about town planning, which is related to our topic of discussion today. We know in Yaoundé, Douala, and other cities in Cameroon, when it rains, we have floods. We see litters of uh, litters of ferrous domains or defense domains flowing the streets and death swims. So what can be the cause for this? Is it that the town is not well planned? 
Well, I think uh, generally um, it's good that we'll, specific, we'll limit our concept to Cameroon, yeah. but we must generally say that uh, the, uh, the majority of towns and cities in Africa are not planned. Uh, sections of the cities are planned, but the majority are unplanned quarters, and the dominance of the unplanned quarters are the essence or are at the center of the, diff the different problems that we face. Now, to be specific to uh, what we want to talk on Cameroon, what you have cited falls within the domain of the environmental aspect of town planning. Town planning. Just okay. as I told you, that we have three concepts. So it will be more easier for our audience to understand us if we break down each thing we want to take here. Yeah. That is not your job anyway. If I break it down in that concept for them to really get it. Because in our training, we have to make sure that we train people with these three specialties. Governance, infrastructural management and planning and environmental management and planning when the three are put together the town becomes impeccable now to answer the question when we have a city like Douala or Yaoundé with the environment will constitute the aspect of waste disposal the waste disposal here can be categorized into we can say solid waste household waste and liquid waste so when you now the management of this waste means how people dump the waste how the waste is collected yeah. through different means environmental protection again here yeah, is in terms of maybe we can say green spaces what some people will call green belts yeah. like for example we have some wooden uh, some wood areas uh, uh, where people go to do some fun time like uh was sent anastasi mm -hmm. or the area opposite where the couple central where you have some ministries behind the like minister of transport those type of areas are called green belts you also have to, to do, take that into consideration to manage certain we can say slopey areas because if you look at those areas they are slopey Slope. areas where in town planning we call them areas that are not fit for uh, we can say housing or for habitation so in the cities of Douala and Yaoundé some of these elements are not well catered for for example if you look at the way waste is being collected from homes mm -hmm. how they are disposed, disposed it becomes a problem we'll start with household waste that is peelings of uh, food What's remains of food and all of that you will see that in some places where the garbage collection company doesn't get there, get there. people just dump their waste either in the nearby bush or they keep it outside for some mechanism for it to be taken elsewhere if you take solid uh, liquid waste that is when they wash things, mm -hmm. they wash clothes, or from some toilets. Some people just have uh, uh, places where this, this uh, don't have mechanisms where this can be channeled. So this waste is also just thrown away in any form and anyhow. And so it becomes a problem when rain falls. I'm going to our uh, concept, concept proper. Yeah. When rain falls, the path where runoff when rain falls, the water that flows so is called so runoff, runoff yeah. is blocked. And so this water finds its way in different areas which are not supposed to be the case. Yeah. And so it produces what we call stagnant water or what can produce floods. So it is caused by the blockade of the normal path of flowing water. Now you have streams and rivers. In the case of Yaoundé, the major flood is caused by the river Fundi and its tributaries. Yeah. The river Fundi is the major river that flows across the city of Yaoundé. It has other tributaries like the Abiege, the Lemfu, and in different quarters they give different names yes. to it. So when this, uh, this uh, uh, the rain falls and the river Fundi receives the quantity that it receives, it's supposed to flow normally and cuts across Yaoundé and go to where it is going to. Mm -hmm. But in the course of flowing across Yaoundé, these channels and the others what have been blocked mm -hmm. through the waste that have been dumped by the population, population. and sometimes even by some other uh, institutions like markets and, mm -hmm. so, and so on and so forth so it blocks the normal passage of the of the water so the excess water that cannot flow easily goes out of its normal path yeah so that water that goes out of its normal path is what we will see at post central avenue kennedy which causes the flood that is noticed there yeah. in the other quarters where it's not avenue kennedy the path of the river too or the stream which has been blocked by the waste find its way out of the normal path and goes to the quarters the houses and whatever and produces the floods that yeah. are noticed in those areas so the major cause of floods is the aspect of poor waste disposal in 
these uh, water bodies. The second major cause is the fact that Douala and Yaoundé are situated in equatorial tropical areas where there is very heavy rainfall. Okay. There is very heavy rainfall. And so during the months of heavy rainfall, it is very easy for the banks of these rivers to be overflowed by the quantity of rain that falls. Yeah. And so the water has to be trapped through some mechanism. You know, and since this has not been done, I will tell you how that can be done. Yeah. Maybe we'll go to solutions. Since this is not being done, the excess water overflows and produces flooding. And then you have another <laughs> aspect, which is another human cause, the aspect of the poor use of slopey areas. Okay. The poor use of, like when you go to Yaoundé, Setville, they said Colin, you have hills or certain places where they have deforestated the areas. Uh -huh. And so when rain falls, water easily finds its way into channels. channels yeah. And increases the quantity of water to flow. And when that water is too much for the channel to take, the rest of the water overflows in banks and causes the floods that are noticed. You talked of uh, urban development. You talk of governance and infrastructural and environmental. You've elaborated a lot on the environmental issue. Can you talk a little bit about infrastructural? Infrastructural is in terms of... Um, we, uh, we, will we will start with the major one, which is housing. Okay. Housing, the, the houses in a city form part of the infrastructure of a city. And when you look at the cities which we are concentrating on Douala and Yaoundé, you will see that there are more what we call in our jargon the unplanned quarters than the planned the quarters. quarters here. The, the planned quarters here are quarters which the, the uh, we can say the, the lands are all titled. The houses that have been built there have building permits. Mm -hmm. And they have a certain they have certain rules and regulations on how they are supposed to be built. They have access ways in terms of motor, you can move within them in a zigzag manner or in a square like manner without much stress. Yeah. Those are what we call planned quarters. And when you get the other type of quarters where these facilities are not there, we call them the unplanned quarters. When the unplanned quarters dominate the planned in, quarters. The, in the planned quarters, you will have a problem of urban uh, a poor urban planning okay. and urban and uh, urban problems. You have the roads, the roads. Some of the roads that we found in we find in Douala and Yaoundé are not official roads. Okay. They are roads that have been created by the population or the early settlers in a quarter, and they, they did something to assess their plots, and from there it continued in that manner. So these roads are not within the management plan of the city council or of the councils, councils. and so the the roads are like we can say abandoned to themselves. And so it produces infrastructural problem of bad roads. The other ones that are even official roads yeah. are not maintained regularly. And so they also produce infrastructural problems problem. like the traffic jam that we normally see in our cities. Where the roads have been built, they have not been built following the norms mm -hmm. of a city. For example, when you are moving through a road in a city like Douala and Yaoundé and there is no dividing lane in the road, it means an oncoming car and a, an ongoing okay. car can have a head-on collision, mm -hmm. which is not supposed to be the case in a city like Douala and Yaoundé and a host of others. Okay, um, uh, Prince, you, you talk like a specialist in which, or an expert in which you are. So, before I come back to your viewers of Seven News Television, you are getting Seven News this point in time. It is your favorite program known as Experts. We are talking about the effects of poor urban planning in Cameroon. Let us follow this report by Tereba, how litters, deaths are being littered all over the city of Yaoundé. Tereba. Une étendue d'eau qui sommeille en plein cœur de la ville de Yaoundé, on est loin de s'imaginer que la qualité des eaux pose problème. Dans un site presque abandonné, en dépit des récents efforts d'aménagement du lac municipal initié par les principaux responsables de la ville. Un lac d'eau devenu par essence le lieu d'accumulation de toutes sortes de déchets. Point à partir duquel on pourrait également appréhender les signaux de la mauvaise gestion des eaux ainsi que des effets de changement climatique. 
Et cela a, a comme impact principal la démobilisation, la désocialisation des populations. Et cela est parfois cause de multiples conflits, aussi bien des conflits sur le plan social, les conflits sur le plan économique. Et, et cela aussi peut indiquer les efforts du gouvernement dans son projet d'émergence sociale. Un tour de ce côté de Niamey au Niger où nous entraîne la plateforme à Nil for PSD qui y a récemment séjourné à l'occasion de la journée de la protection de l'environnement. On peut remarquer un dépôt d'ordures qui s'est constitué ici autour de ce cours d'eau. Non loin de là, un marché à quelques mètres des habitations prospère. Notre objectif est en venant ici dans ces lieux qui ressemblent à plusieurs lieux de la ville de Niamey, de plusieurs euh, villes ici en Afrique, c'était de voir comment est-ce que les déchets sont gérés. Et on a eu à voir ici que les déchets n'ont pas un vrai système de traitement. Il n'y a pas de véritables mesures qui sont prises aussi bien de la part des pouvoirs publics et aussi des initiatives de la population, de la communauté. En fait, comment au Niger, d'après une étude, seulement 20% des déchets sont collectés. Le cliché est quasi le même dans la plupart des grandes villes dans la sous-région africaine. Chose qui pourrait, même s'il faut le déplorer, justifier l'attitude des populations d'opter de déverser les déchets cosmiques dans les cours d'eau. Avec un impact à la fois sur la santé, les animaux et l'environnement. Il y a des réels impacts qui sont perceptibles non seulement sur la santé en termes de mauvaises odeurs qui sont dégagées, mais également sur euh, la vie, le vécu des populations. Plusieurs populations riveraines boivent de cette eau usée qui coule au travers de cette zone et plusieurs animaux sont également brûlés. On a également à voir que plusieurs pâturages sont nourris au travers des herbes qui sont euh, coupées ici dans cette zone. Il y a un réel impact sur la santé. Donc ces questions sont des questions à revoir. Ils posent la problématique de la gestion durable des terres et également de la gestion des eaux par les autorités, également par les populations. Un appel qui, on l'espère, ne restera pas l'être mort, tant pour les populations qui ressentent en premier ces effets de dégradation des terres que les gouvernants, dont le rôle est d'assurer la gestion harmonieuse des eaux, notamment dans les zones où la sécheresse sévit avec acuité. Thanks very much, Tereba, for that report. Viewers of Surveillance Television, you've all seen our city, how it looks like, and we call it a capital city. Filth everywhere, litters found in all the corners of Yaoundé. The streets or rivers are overflowing. If you're just switching on your television set, this is your program known as Experts. We are talking on the effects of poor urban planning in Cameroon. The expert for the day is Prince Ta Eyong, an urban organizer and planner of the town. Prince, you are talking of infrastructural. Can you please elaborate more about the infrastructural that leads to poor urban development? Yeah, having talked about the housing and the, the, roads, the roads, we can talk also about some social and economic facilities. Like? Like schools, mm -hmm. like markets, like hospitals, and some other as, uh, facilities that are used by groups of people. You will notice that sometimes you don't understand the logic on which markets have been programmed or planned or even built where they are. Because you don't build a market at a roundabout, which is already a place that attracts pop people Pop -pops, yeah. to move to different directions and even high rate of traffic. And then when there are no other alternatives of movement, and if you look at most of the markets, they are almost found at roundabouts. We will take the one nearest to us here, which is that of the, uh, the Acacia. Acacia market. You can take the case of the Meleng market. 
you can take the case of the Fundi market, you can take the case of uh, 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 the one going to Atangada uh, something, uh, uh -huh. not far from here, uh, going to Vongbi, 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 Vongbi yeah. market, you can take the one at the 2D, just to name a few, you can take Bopi in Douala, and most of, if you look at those markets, the locations that they have been implanted pose a problem, and they are also the source of heavy waste production. Yeah. And so when you go to those places, you will notice heaps of litter or waste around those areas, which have become too difficult to be, uh, uh, you know, disposed of on daily basis. If you also take other aspects like uh, government services, for example, you will notice that in the cities of Douala and Yaoundé and some other cities in Cameroon, you can't leave and go to a place and say this is a service quarter. That's true. This is a service quarter. You may see the Geo's office found here, the mayor's, uh, the council found in another direction, the police station found in some other area. So it becomes difficult for, for the city to have what we call planning. Because in some cases, if you take, for example, the case of Boya or the case of Bamenda, if you go to up station, for example, you may easily sort out yourself mm -hmm. most of the things you want to you want certify, to mm -hmm. for example. If you go to Boya, where you have, I think, after class quarter, we have the administrative services, services, you will see most of the services around there. You can easily sort out yourself with the things you want to do. Mm -hmm. That is an example of a semi-planning, yeah. uh, of some planning, what we are talking about. So, infrastructurally, the way some of the cities have been planned, Douala and Yaoundé, poses a problem of waste disposal and the beauty of the city, the city. and even circulation. Because at one point, if you look at it, when certain activities are taking place in these cities, the whole town is blocked. Yeah. The whole town is blocked. Movement becomes so difficult. And all. Those are examples of the infrastructural placements in these cities that pose difficulties to the way the city is supposed to enjoy what it's supposed to. You can take other minor things like sports infrastructure. Either they don't exist or they are found in places where they have overstayed their breeding yeah. and needed some displacement or some other alternatives in terms of way out which are not yet the case we we'll take governance to maybe round up with the aspects governance here is in terms of how decisions are made okay how the decisions are implemented and how they are followed how decisions are made how they are implemented, implemented and how, and how they are followed all these things are found in well documented uh, uh, laws in cameroon in Cameroon, we have the law of 2004, which sets the base on what town planning should look like. We have the one of 2008, which clearly elaborates how the town has to be managed in the case where they don't have specific town rules and regulations. regulations. These two laws, which have other sub ones concerning how other things should be managed, are at the disposal of users. Yeah. But we have a number of things that make them difficult to be impl implemented. For example, in the governance aspect, I was talked about taking decisions. Decisions, yeah. If you go to those documents, you will see specific elements clearly elaborated on how, for example, you will acquire land. Yes. How you have to build on that land. The things that you must do for that land right. to be accepted as a, build, a, a land to, be, to build on, they are clearly spe spelled there. They are not followed by most of the people. What do you have to pay in case you need to carry out an activity in the city? Okay. This are, we're talking of governance. Oh, governance yeah. Yes, this, the decision making. What do you have to pay in order to carry out activity in the city? They are clearly elaborated there. For example, you want to carry out, say, a way keeping. Yeah. You want to carry out maybe a marriage ceremony and you need to block the road. The road we call yeah. it temporary blocking of the road. There are mechanisms clearly elaborated on how you have to do that. And there must be an alternative way if you are blocking the main way. Yeah. These things are clearly spelled out. When they sign those things, are the decisions respected? This goes to do with governance. Mm -hmm. How come that sometimes they block the road, the population does not even know that they have blocked the road. You only come and meet the blockade. <laughs> that poses a problem of decision making. Yeah. And it is a problem in governance. If you take also the aspect of how markets are managed, yeah. how motor parks are managed, these are all things that have to do with governance. They are clearly spelled out in the documents, but, implementation. but the implementation becomes a problem. Two now, who, how are the implementations made? You know, there is selectiveness. 
you and I, for example, may want to go to get some of those things. Yeah. When the law clearly specifies that you have the right to aid, they will not give you. That's true. They will not give you. Whereas some other person has had it, and you know exactly how that person had it. It poses a problem of governance. You go to the follow-up. In the case where they have done that, sometimes they can block a road that is meant for 24 hours. It stays there for 48 hours. It has not been cleared. Yeah. That poses a problem. Or, for example, they have marked X on places that maybe have violated town planning rules and regulation, like constructing where it is wrong. Yeah. It stays there for several years. Nobody bothers to come and, you know, uh, do, execute what has been done. Or they say that you must not build in A, B, C area. People go and they are building there and people are watching and they are seeing. Nobody says anything. And then when something has happened, they start telling you that you were not supposed, supposed to be to. there. How did the person manage to put the house to it? And sometimes they have stayed there for years, 10, 20 and so on. You go and build in the land that is supposed to be government land, they say my two plus or whatever, or Maxi and so on and so forth. You have been there for 25, 30 years. Nobody bothers. These are governance, pro governance problems Problem. which pose a And then when these people build in those places, they don't follow any rule. So they build, block the road even, you come to ask the person, he tells you off, and then things stay the way they are. And then, so you have the decision making, implementation, and follow up. Yeah. When these three things are not well coordinated, it becomes a problem for the city to be governed in the proper way. Uh, please, let me find out something from you. Is it that the poor execution or the implementation of the law is due to corruption or what's so called of the country? There are a number of issues. The first one is that of incompetence. The first major problem is incompetence. Because, for example, we are also part to be blamed indirectly. As town planning engineers, we have an order. The government has given us the possibility to organize ourselves so that we can help. The order is not very functional as I speak to you. Yeah. I don't remember when we lastly had a general assembly meeting. Uh, men members have died. Others have gone on retirement. But I don't remember when they lastly opened the doors for new, uh, uh, new engineers to join. Mm -hmm. And then we don't have a scope of working. You just walk anywhere, anyhow you want it to be. And then, so there is already a problem first at that level. You have the second problem, as I said, that, uh, of training. Very few town planning engineers are trained in Cameroon. Okay. And when they are trained, they are not used appropriately. It poses a problem. When you go to the councils, most of the councils have what we call, we can call them town planning technicians. technicians. But they are not engineers because the law does not permit certain councils to recruit of certain people of certain categories. So if they recruit me, for example, in a council within a certain amount of money, I won't work. I will not yeah. accept the job. Yes, no true. matter how it is. So it poses a problem. So there is the problem of competence. The degree of comp uh, competent people in the field are not enough. The order of town planners is not functioning well. Within the councils, they don't use even the few that they have there to do what they are supposed to do. So it produces the issue of competence. We have the aspect of corruption which you clearly raised. Yeah. It is a, that one is a generalized problem. Just as we're saying, how do people obtain land titles? titles. How do they buy land? How do they ob obtain building permits? How do they obtain uh, decisions to maybe do transportation in town or cities, the motorbike, the taxis, and so on and so forth? So these are some of the governance decisions that are taken by councils, mayors, or city, uh, government delegates, which you don't understand the logic under which some of those decisions are taken. But they are taken because yeah. you see those things happening. So you have the aspect of corruption. We've talked about people building where they are not supposed, supposed to be. To be. Yeah. Sometimes these people, in the course of building, the agents of councils and so on come there and then they tip them and then they go there. Wait, wait. and then you continue your work as if nothing is happening and you would, there will be no way you will say that this person authorized you to do that mm -hmm. so that element can only be attributed to corruption yeah. and it poses a very serious problem the third aspect that we can talk about is in terms of consciousness many african countries cameroon inclusive have not yet understood the fact that development begins with the physical presentation of a country. country. If you land in, if in Paris, for example, or in uh, Brussels, for example, or in New York, or in London, the first thing that catches your eye is the beauty of what you see. Yeah. Even from air, as you are watching through the window, you can see the beauty of those cities. That is town planning. 
that is already town planning in africa and cameroon inclusive we have not yet had that picture of it all yeah. we talked about development uh, vision 2035 it cannot be realized without good town planning that's true because if the town has to be planned following the three specifications we have given then you will have nothing to bother about a town okay prince uh before I come back to you, let's follow this report. Viewers of Seven News Television, let's get this report by Fabian Baga talking about the traffic jam in our town. C'est peu de dire combien la situation globale des engorgements de la circulation automobile dans les deux principales villes du Cameroun tant à s'aggraver pour devenir même, dans certains cas, totalement insupportable. Le cas ici, en plein centre-ville de Yaoundé, où les usagers de la route ne savent plus à quel sein crier leur indignation. Et vers les années 2007-2008, pour des raisons qu'on y a, il y a changement de ministre au ministère des Travaux publics, et le nouveau ministre arrive, décide de casser la dynamique. Euh, je ne dis pas que les entreprises étaient forcément plus performantes à l'époque, mais je pense qu'au lieu de... Euh, au lieu de euh, 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 jeter l'enfant avec l'eau du bain, on aurait pu, il y avait euh, moyen à mon avis d'ajuster euh, pour avoir une meilleure performance. Donc ce qui s'est passé, c'est qu'ils ont arrêté de passer les marchés d'entretien routier, ce qui est extrêmement grave au plan macroéconomique parce que le réseau n'étant plus entretenu, euh, c'est les coûts d'exploitation des véhicules qui augmentent et donc du coup le coût des produits. La route donc, devenue territoire de rareté et donc naturellement d'indiscipline, de mauvaise conduite, de bataille et donc de conflit. La route où l'on exprime des brutalités en tout genre et des comportements généralement en proie à un certain degré d'outrance. Cette même route, par devant lesquelles nombreuses sont désormais les inquiétudes ouvertement exprimées pour dénoncer le très faible niveau de préparation avec lequel les autorités publiques les mettent en perspective de la prochaine Coupe d'Afrique des Nations de football censée se tenir au Cameroun dans un avenir très proche. Le secteur du BTP globalement au Cameroun est sinistré. Ça n'a pas l'air, mais de mon point de vue, c'est un secteur sinistré. Depuis, on va dire globalement, 2007-2008. Donc bientôt 10 ans, c'est un secteur globalement sinistré. Comment cela se traduit-il Vous rencontrez tous les entrepreneurs camerounais, tous les bureaux d'études camerounais, vous verrez qu'ils ont des dettes en centaines de millions, voire en milliards pour certains. C'est-à-dire que les gens ne sont pas payés. Un cri d'alarme depuis longtemps exprimé par les spécialistes des questions urbaines qui relèvent presque tous, avec régularité, l'absurdité d'un pays qui a trahi son rapport à l'avenir en trahissant sa capacité à se doter d'infrastructures crédibles pour la vie collective. Nous avons également pris acte des points d'engorgement du projet, à savoir, n'est-ce pas, les problèmes d'indemnisation, à savoir les problèmes de surcoût des travaux qui n'avaient pas été prévus, notamment le traitement des marécages qui avaient été identifiés, et également les problèmes de changement de site de carrière. C'est donc avec ce Cameroun-là qu'il faudra composer pour la prochaine canne, mais pas seulement. Déjà, de façon plus insoutenable, dans la grande médiocrité de la vie quotidienne, que cela signifie pour le plus gros de ses habitants. Thanks very much, Fabienne Baga, for that report. It makes me laugh to see that a country like Cameroon has a ministry of planning and urban development, but the cities itself or themselves are in a shamble, I mean a replica of nonsense. We are quite sorry saying that, but the truth is bitter that must be spoken. Viewers of Seven News Television, if you are switching on your television set just now, this is your program, The Experts. Today, we are talking on the theme, the effects of poor urban planning in Cameroon. We have a specialist, an expert, an engineer in urban planning. He's no other person than Prista Ayon, who is going to give us more lights on it. Prince, we've just followed that report about your country, 
about the capital city and the economic capital of Cameroon, Douala and Yaoundé. You've seen how there's a lot of traffic. People cannot make their way out, vehicles, not to talk of them. You were talking of uh, infrastructural, and that is one of it. Can you please try to give us a tips about a solution to come out of this infrastructural problem? Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's really a very serious problem. And uh, we have carried out a number of studies right from school days when we were doing practical exercises and even from the different research works that uh, uh, classmates, I uh, call them uh, uh, training colleagues, carried out because we had three specialties. Those who were involved in infrastructural development, a lot of them focused on urban transport yeah. in terms of the top LC was a pressing issue. Some of us focused on governance and then another team was working on environmental issues. To be specific with the, the road issue, the first thing we have to say is that it is very regrettable that the population, there is no city in Cameroon that has a population above 3 million. That's if there should be any approaching the 3 million bar, it should be Douala and Yaoundé. And, and then we have other cities in Africa, without going too far, Nigeria, which have populations above 15 million. I will take the city of Lagos, Lagos. that has about 20 million people. The city of Abuja with more than 5 million people. The city of Calabar with more than 10 million people. There is none of these cities where you can stay in traffic for more than two hours. With 15 million people we're talking about. So, how do you explain the fact that a city with less than 3 million people, people got stuck in the traffic for about one hour yeah. and sometimes even more? No. So, that is very disturbing. And what are the causes? The first thing, as we have said, is that most of our quarters or streets or are linked by a single passage by a single road yeah if you are going to from a to point b in most cases you must use only a lane a lane to get to that area there is no there are no other possibilities to get there that is the first problem so in that case when you have people who live from residential areas to their workplace. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, people living in Mendong, uh, uh, Jouvence, and all of that, uh, Zomblash, Superred, going to Central Town. They have very few alternative roads to take. To take that's if true. you're living in Mendong, coming through, maybe take us say, once you don't you don't take the road going down, the, whatever they call another road that comes down still as Superred, yeah. you have to go only down. Only you down. get blocked. If you are going to uh, the road going to uh, Tukebe, 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 you yeah. get blocked. If you are coming down to Rompoy Express, you get blocked. If you are coming down straight to Acacia, you get blocked. If you leave Damas and the other Abubobo areas coming to town, coming through Simeon, you use only that one road until you get to maybe Vogt and wherever that you meet and that route that you can take. Yeah. You get blocked. If you leave um, uh, Oja and those other areas there coming to town and you happen to take that road through a changeur, from there until you get to a changeur, you use only one road. Uh -huh. From the échangeur coming into town where you have the agencies, you will use only one road until you get to where you have to take the other road. So you see, this is the first problem responsible for the traffic, yeah. which therefore means that there is need to start reflecting on other routes, yeah. which are possible, of other roads, such that when you are going to a certain direction and you don't need to pass through a certain path, yeah. you don't need to go through that direction. That direction. And so it will reduce the number of cars that take the same line. The second issue concerns the nature of the roads yeah. in terms of sizes. Most of our roads have are lesser than the population, the carrying capacity of the population, the population. and the cars. Yeah. People buy more cars to use on the same road that have not been increased. Mm -hmm. Because the roads of Yaoundé in the majority are 15 years old and above. That's true. If you take, for example, the road of Obili going downwards, mm -hmm. or you take maybe the road of Kate General and so on and so forth. So it poses a problem of fluidity. Yeah, you talked of uh, increasing or creating more roads or new roads. We, uh, we know that uh, the town is poorly planned. Does it mean that they have to destroy some of the houses in order to make new roads? In reality, that is what we call in our jargon urban renewal. Okay. We have two major terms, 
urban renewal and urban renovation. renovation. Urban renewal is the one where we take measures to improve what has existing mm -hmm. without breaking any new one, but in increasing the one that we have or making them more secure or making them better. That is urban renewal. So we can renew some of the roads. If you take, for example, some of the roads in Yaoundé or Dwala where you are moving, there are potholes. potholes. You know, traffic sometimes is caused by those potholes where people coming from maybe ongoing cars take the part of incoming, incoming cars, cars. That's true. And they cause traffic. So that is what we can call road renewal. They need to renew some of those roads. Yeah. You also have the case where the roads need to be partitioned so that there is no way that oncoming car can find itself in the way of outgoing car. Yeah. That is not done. And so it also poses a problem of fluidity. Yeah. Because sometimes the traffic that is caused somewhere, when you go across that area, you notice that there was nothing even to bother about. That's true. That is caused by the nature of the road that is a road renewal. If you take another example, for, let's go to renovation because they think it's just so, <laughs> yes, it's just flowing, it's just coming. If you take renovation, that is where we need creation of new roads. New roads. And some of the roads exist already, but they are not maintained and they are not they, they don't have the status to cause fluidity. Yeah. I will take example, we are at 7 News TV, where we are. If you leave Rumpet Express coming to Acacia, and you don't need to go to Acacia Market or pass through, they have done a shot they have done a passage yeah. which goes down and comes out almost below the Akasa road where you can then go to maybe Simeon or you can go across and come up closer to the Lycee yes. BMRC yes. neighborhood. That's true. You know? But if you look at the road, it is still small. small. If you took such initiative, you would have given it a way that it solves the problem appropriately. appropriately. But right now, those roads are still causing traffic. Sometimes you post the traffic around your area here, mm -hmm. whereas that, because it was not properly thought of, it was not given the size that it deserves. So it has not actually solved the problem. And then you have other alternatives of roads. It is possible that people would leave uh, Damas, Obobogo, and even uh, those other, um, uh, Oja, uh, the other area, Bankomo areas, they could use the train yeah. to get to the central town. And from there, they find their way into the town That's true. without much ado, and that will reduce the number of people who use the road. That is not the case. You have the absence of urban transport means in terms of buses, buses yeah. which have come and failed time and again, as we all know. That will help to do what we call mass transportation. Yeah. Because if a bus carries 30 people, and 30 people were to take taxis, if we divide it by five, five. that will be six taxis on the road. It poses a problem. So we can also use a way of reducing the number of cars on the way by creating mass transportation means where many people will use it and reduce the number of cars on the way. Yes, uh, Prince Ayong sir, we are talking on the effects of poor urban planning in Cameroon. There are some people who live in swampy areas or what you know as a lobby. Others live in hilly areas um, that, uh, has, uh, that makes them panic each time it rains. I'll take a good example what happened in uh, Limbe in the FACO division last time, where um, uh, the, the hill collapsed and buried over 20 people. And you are talking about urbanization and planning. What can a government do in such a situation to stop people from building such an environment? The government has already done something legally. Yeah. In the town planning rules and regulation that we talked about, it is clearly specified. So, legally or documentarily, the government has taken provisions to that effect and the, the clear cut or simple uh, statement is that no habitation or building in such areas, yeah. swampy areas and hill, hill slopes. slopes. Yes, hill slopes or top of hills. It is clearly stated that no habitation should be in those areas. So, that is already a disposition. The issue now it's is implementation. implementation, as just as we said. So <laughs> there is a, this, a, a law in that context. So the issue now is that the councils or the authorities that assist the councils in their duty, like some of the state services, should take their responsibility. That is the first thing to do. You know, there is over-centralization to a fault because some of these things could be easily managed with, lo uh, with uh, the other local authorities, like traditional rulers, quarter heads, mm -hmm. even youths in the quarter, through some remuneration. But the council will want to do everything, everything on its own. 
and so it poses a problem of follow up because they cannot be everywhere at the same at time. The same time. That's so true. once they just see somebody throwing the first heap of sand, or molding blocks, or bringing some construction material, it will be reported. Mm -hmm. And if we have an objective administration in that area, they will pre they will stop whatever is taking place. So that is the first. Okay, Prince. Uh, <laughs> before we come back to the second point, let's follow this report. Viewers of several. Gone are the days when pupils and students in primary and secondary schools used to take the beginning of each academic year as a day when they are called to clean up the campus. The 2018-2019 school year has commenced with speed as teachers are busy impacting knowledge to the older new students in the classroom in some private institutions in Yaoundé. All the classes are jam-packed. Classes started exactly at 7.55 where all the parents and the parents who came registering allowed their children into the classes and the teachers were teaching effectively. We started with day one's program and we shall continue with all the programs following the programs that we are prepared for the week. While some students and peoples are gaining knowledge in class, other parents coming from the social unrest zone of the northwest and southwest regions are still to gain admission for their kids as they spend time waiting for their authorities to accept them. The parents are just too many for us to manage in one day. So we decided that by doing reopening progressively, we'll be able to coordinate and manage the reopening so that the day that a class is coming, we can easily manage them to start classes effectively. About 30% is linked to that because uh, some parents who have come today are saying that the, the children they have brought came to them over the weekend. Meanwhile, there are some old students also there who are still registering and there are some that had had admission but they have not been able to raise the money to pay the fees. So they too are also linked with the, with the group that is there. So I think that it's a combination of these three factors. Students and peoples have to understand that success in an academic year starts from now. Thanks very much for that report. Viewers of Seven News Television, may I remind you that this is your program known as Expert. If you're just switching on your television sets, the theme for today is the effect of poor urban management or planning in Cameroon. We have a specialist and expert, an engineer in urban planning. He's no other person than Prista Eyung. Yes, Prince. You followed the reports about school reopening. Is there anything or course or subject that talks about building the city or urbanization in the educational system of Cameroon? Well, uh, I think, yes, there is uh, the subject geography okay. where they have a little element of uh, uh, urban uh, urban aspects that yeah. are treated there uh, waste disposal uh, water disposal in short a number of issues are handled there but at a very elementary level yeah. and it's not taken very seriously but at least those who do that subject have an awareness of some of the malaise that occur when a city is not well planned or there we treat them as consequences of urbanization Okay. in the case of African countries and Cameroon in particular. So there is, but I think the impact is very less, it's very small, and it's usually at the high school level where there are already specialities and very few students may be in that series. And secondly, this is mostly in the English subsystem. I don't have a good idea about the French system, but geography and history in, those, in that subsystem seems to be a passive subject. So I don't think this is seriously taken there. Thirdly, our syllabuses are not the same. It's the two subsystems. So I'm very sure that this element may not actually be at the center of teaching in the geography subject in that other subsection. So the, it, the impact is less felt. When we started, you talked of uh, the environmental issues of uh, urban planning, and you made mention of uh, poor waste management. Can you give us, as an expert, some solutions to handle this problem? 
Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, the first one, measure one, is that of sensitization, like what your TV station is doing today. It's very important for the, pu the public to see what can happen when waste is poorly managed. That is the first thing. And then the powers that be to also see the consequences, even if they pass and see them, but watching it in a TV program live may create more awareness. That is the first thing to do. The second thing to do is to give practical solutions on how to do this, uh, how to do the waste collection. For example, at homes, we could have different trash cans. Even if we can't have solid trash cans, we can use plastic papers, where we try to differentiate the different waste produced in homes. For example, the ones that are perishable, that can get rotten or decompose, the ones that are not, like uh, glasses, for example, and other things that cannot be decomposed, if we, se we separate them in this way, it may facilitate disposal or treatment when they are taken from the homes. Yes. Yeah. You also have how to channel out a liquid waste because we don't just limit ourselves to solid waste. To solid waste yeah. We have to make sure that in all homes, we have access ways of waste water. Yeah. So that if we have to maybe dispose of any waste, it should have a way to flow that will not hamper either other people's well-being or their safety. That is for homes. This can also apply to market areas mm -hmm. or those uh, social or commercial areas that also produce much weight. Schools, um, hospitals, um, um, markets, and all the others. They can also help to do this. When you take the quantity of plastic that is produced in market areas and other plastic things which are non-degradable, it becomes a problem when they mix them all up okay, with yeah. the other things that can decompose. So that is the first thing to do, separation of the waste produced in homes or in places which produce waste. The second is to create channels where if waste has to be, liquid waste, even in the markets or hospitals or schools have to be thrown, they throw it there, it follows that passage and doesn't extend to other areas. The third one is how to treat this waste. Now, when the waste is carried, either by Zakam or whatever company without any publicity, to some places, how are the waste? How is the waste treated? Do they just go and dump the waste there, as we see in most cases? If not, how is it treated? Treat it. We will say that, even though they say some people may deny that it's a school of thought, environmental pollution goes with burning waste. But sometimes it is better to burn the waste. Mm -hmm. and reduce it from being present where it is, it is and causing more disaster than having the dust that have been caused from the waste. So yeah. in extreme cases, waste that is accumulated should be burnt. Yeah. In another context, you can do what they call compacting. You compact the waste. There are machines that can be gotten to that effect, caterpillars, caterpillars. or whatever. They compact the waste and reduce its quantity and in the smaller quantity, they can dispose of it easily without occupying much space. Mm -hmm. Another uh, a possible way to do that is in terms of transforming it, which is a regular one that people say. Mm -hmm. Transforming the waste, that is like the, when you have separated them, they can take the decomposable waste or the degradable ones and transform them to some compost manure or mm -hmm. some whatever thing they can use them for and make it more useful. And that will reduce the quantity of waste that we see here and there and so we can also talk about maybe the where the waste is kept yeah. the, in the course of the trans, transmission because when you go to town and you see some spots where waste is dumped you will see that the spaces have become smaller than the waste that is dumped there yeah. which means that the containers that are placed in those areas are smaller than the population, the population size, size. so right. either they double them or they create a different mechanism for maybe a warehouse they can build a house like this one open with walls that can manage those type of things where you throw the waste inside, inside. and from there when the zakam comes or the company they take it from that room it will be this room will be far bigger it's about three times the containers with four times the containers will see a zakam placing in places yeah so that can help in avoiding the scattered waste that we see everywhere in town as it is the case thank you very much prince Taeyong. you are an engineer in urban planning Thanks for coming, and thanks once again for being our guest this afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here, and it's always good when we contribute in uh, making suggestions that can help improve our cities, because today the cities have become the center of human living. And if Africa is supposed to emerge, it can only emerge by transforming rural areas into cities. And these cities need to be planned, they need to be managed, and we are available for that exercise.
Okay, viewers of Seven News Television, we are sorry that this program has come to an end. Whatever thing has a beginning must have an end. It is only God Almighty who has no end. The program is ending, but Seven News programs continue. Next is Club Elites, plus by Amang Tepono, followed by the news at 7 p.m. This program is a success because of my technicians, the cameramen, the editors, and the guy who controls the button. I greet you all, and I love you all. Keep watching 7 News. Thanks for watching.